Hi, I'm Ken Forkish, and this is a demonstration of, uh, for my new bread book. Um, this dough that I mixed uh, about three and a half hours ago is ready to, is risen fully all the way up to its line. This is a six quart dough tub, and uh, uh, the ideal um, first rise time is how long it takes to get to this line in the dough tub. I describe it in my book as a quarter inch below the two quart line in a six quart dough tub. Uh, so I want to remove it so the dough is removed gently from the dough tub. And I like to put some flour in around the rim. You see how my hand's diving that flour down in there. Uh, and then if you look inside, the, the whole idea is to be gentle with the dough. And I don't want to just pull it out. I want to ease it out and I like to lift from the bottom uh, and then just get it out onto the floured surface on the countertop. However it wants to come out, you don't need, there's really no top or bottom at this stage. So you can see a nice clean extraction. And um, the, now that it's on the flower top, you can see that you, I want to pick it up and just set it back down. It's like, why'd you do that? Because I, um, I just want this to be in a nice rectangular shape. If you want, the dough's going to be a little bit sticky, and it's, uh, it'll make it a little easier to handle if you put a little bit of flour into your hands like that. Um, you can do two kinds of bread from the single dough. It's your choice. You can do a pan bread. It will rise and then bake in the pan. It's the simplest to do. And uh, that's kind of the point of this book, is to show you how to make artisan pan breads. But then I realized when I was writing it that you can also, from the same dough, make a beautiful Dutch oven loaf. So one, one dough recipe will make two completely different kinds of bread. So first I'm going to show you how to shape this into a, uh, uh, into a regular loaf, uh, pan loaf. Um, you probably don't need it. Most of the bread pans you buy today are going to be non-stick. But if it sticks at the very end, after all that work you put into it, it's really disappointing. It's just safe to use, so just do a little spray like that ahead of time. So flour in my hands. And I describe this step in the book as you stretch it out until it's point of resistance and you fold it like a packet. Um, and then you roll it up and place it in the pan. That's how easy it is. But I wanted to tell you ahead of time because my hands are probably move faster than yours. Uh, so here I stretched it to its point of resistance. I fold this over, fold that over like that. I describe that as being like a packet because those are the only words I could come up with. <laughs> um, and then you can go top down or you can go bottom up. We're just going to do a roll up. And you can see the width of the pan relative to the width of this. It'll spread out a little bit as I do it. When I'm finished, I want to be able, I want it to have this dimension and just go right into the pan. So I like to roll up this way. You can see, and you can do that and just get it into the pan and it'll be fine. Um, typically, I'll try to just put a little bit of tension in the dough and that helps give a little bit more volume to the rise. You can hear my oven telling me it's at temperature. So you see how I formed it where I just put a little bit of tension in the dough. You can see my hands and fingers, they're pulling it toward me and they're pushing down at the same time. And that's how you do it. Um, don't need to stress out about this. And all you can do is just get it into the pan. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, so there it is. That's kind of it. You can see it's a little uneven. You can mash it around a little bit if you want. Um, and then the next thing I do is I put it into a plastic bag, like a veggie bag that you get from the market, um, so it doesn't dry out. This at room temperature will rise and it'll be ready to bake in an hour. Uh, I do have one trick, and I want to show you. I need to grab a bag and a little bit of water. I'll be right back. Um, all right, I'm back. Um, so I like to just put a little film of water on the top of the dough. You can see I've got a little water container and I just wet my hand. Not a lot. The whole point of this is so that if the dough rises up and makes contact with your plastic baggie, um, it's not going to stick. And um, it just will make a prettier loaf if it doesn't stick. So there it is. It'll rise for an hour. Don't forget to preheat your oven. I do it at this point and set a timer. Uh, so I set my timer for one hour, and I 
preheated it before we turn the camera on. Uh, but preheat the oven at 450. You'll bake these at 425 degrees. Um, and I like to preheat the oven higher than the bake temperature just to saturate the oven with a lot of heat to get it started nicely. Um, and that's how you remove the dough from the dough tub and shape a pan loaf. It's that easy. The bread is ready to bake. Uh, I put this pan loaf into its baking pan. Um, this was about an hour ago. Um, and I used two pans as examples in the book. Um, this one, the USA pan, um, they're both nonstick. This one, you can tell it's smaller than this guy. Um, this one, it doesn't have a name, it's just a bread pan. <laughs> they're a little bit different sizes. Um, so when I was writing a cookbook uh, that was focused on making bread baked in pans, um, I was like, well, what pan are you going to have in your house? And so I um, just assumed that people are going to use pans they have or they're going to buy pans and they're all going to be a little bit different size and that's all fine. It doesn't, you don't need to geek out on having the exact right pan size. This pan being a little bit bigger, the loaf, once it's ready to bake, is still entirely contained within the pan. This one being smaller, this lo the loaf will be risen up to here and it'll be starting to overflow the sides. Um, and it's kind of cool and I write about it in the book because when it's baked and when you cut slices, the top you'll get those little ears on the top, so it'll have that kind of shape. Um, and it has a nice aesthetic to it that I really enjoy. Um, in a little bit larger pan, the crumb structure will be a little bit lighter um, on the bottom half of the loaf. This thing will rise up to here. Um, whereas here it'll be just a little bit tighter, but it'll be nice and open. Um, as it climbs up out of there. Anyway, they both work very well, and I just wanted to show you. In each case, as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, once they're shaped and into the, uh, into the pan, I give it a light film of water, and you can see how it's touching the plastic, but you don't want it to stick. And that film of water allows it to, mostly, seems a little stickage, but whatever, um, just peels right off. So you can see this is ready to bake, and I'm just going to put it in the oven. I like folded kitchen towels, they work best for me. And just hold it, grab it like that. Of course the pan's not hot right now. Um, put it in. Change the temperature to match the recipe. And then um, my bake time is, in my oven is 50 minutes, and the reason it's a little bit longer than breads you might be used to is these are, these are artisan pan breads, so they have a lot of water in the dough. Uh, they have great flavor, they have long keeping quality, um, but they require a little bit different care and attention um, in the baking, in addition to all the steps leading up to that. So there you have it, bread in the oven.